uh, is entitled Workflows for Large Cohort Neuroimaging Datasets. Um, just one slight change. Uh, in particular, I'm going to be talking about distributed workflows. Uh, and it's a concept I'm going to introduce um, and provide some motivation for why we've done things this way, uh, as opposed to how people normally do it. Uh, in the previous talks, um, Dr. Pauline has provided some uh, great background and motivation for why we need to um, uh, basically uh, keep provenance information, keep metadata about um, all the processing and the analysis we're doing. And you know, I'm just going to add a little bit to that. In a you know, typical sort of neuroimaging workflow, uh, this is not a computational workflow, but the workflow of getting your study done, you, know, you start off with acquiring some data. Uh, and, you, and you know, or getting money to acquire some data, um, and it's usually the first step. Uh, and after that, you know, you have some storage. Uh, you store your data, your neuroimaging data sets, uh, your neuropsychological scores, etc. Um, you do some processing on the data, pre-processing, post-processing. Um, for example, FreeSurf, for FSL, etc. Um, and then you know, you you take your your process data set and apply your shiny statistical model to it and get some, hopefully get some good results. Or you use Excel. I'm not going to judge. Um, and then you, know, you get the answer to the most important question in the universe. And then hopefully, you get a science paper out of it. Um, and you know, this, this gray area is what I see as what neuroinformatics encompasses. You know, it's everything probably including acquisition, but starting from data storage, processing, uh, statistical modeling and analysis, uh, interpretation of results, or modeling of results um, up to your publication. Now, the problem thus far has been, uh, and you can get away with it if you've got some um, small data sets or small studies, is that this has usually been stuff. right? Your boss usually cares about this bit and this bit, and this is your problem. Um, and what has happened is, you know, this is done on the desktop on one computer set, and this is my computer, by the way. This is how it used to be, not anymore, thankfully. Um, you've got a whole bunch of disks connected up with various data sets that, you know, probably been collected over five, ten years, and you probably don't even remember what they are or what you've done to them. Um, you know, you had some one magic script function or program or a bunch of them that you know went from there to there. And in many cases, this was done by a PhD student or a postdoc that has since left the lab. And you know, it might as well be, you know, uh, some archaic language because you can't make heads or tails out of what the script is doing, and you can't modify it. So you know, we don't. We, this is something we really want to avoid. And when you get to sort of large-scale studies, and there are a lot, few of them now, um, such as you know, Able, the Asprey, the Human Connectome Project, this is a big no-no. We cannot work like that. So with the li large-scale studies, and hopefully we can take some of these tools back into the smaller studies, we really want to move away uh, from doing things the old-fashioned way and having a proper informatics system in, play, in place, some automated workflows, um, standardized workflows, and reproducible results. Um, and you know, these are some of the issues we need to overcome. One is you know, reproducibility. Can anyone else actually do what I did, you know, given my data or given someone else's data? Um, consistency and provenance. Can I redo what I did five years from now? Um, do I know what the results mean, how I got there? And state of the art, you know, why are you still using SPM2? Why are you still using SPM2? Um, and you know, so I'm, our pers uh, motivation in our lab for getting some of this stuff done um, was the Asprey Neuro study. So the Asprey Neuro is a longitudinal imaging sub-study of the Asprey uh, main study. Um, the Asprey main study is a randomized clinical trial, low-dose aspirin use um, in a very large cohort. Um, and in our particular sub-study, the two main questions we're interested in is the effect of low-dose aspirin um, on the incidence of cerebral microhemorrhages uh, and on imaging biomarkers of cerebrovascular and cognitive health and aging. Um, you know, we've 
tried to develop a comprehensive and state-of-the-art protocol. Uh, we've got three imaging time points, and baseline, we've already collected data on 550 subjects. Now, that's a lot of data to process and analyze and share at the end of the trial. So to give you an idea, so we collect you know, your standard T1-weighted images, um, flare images, susceptibility-weighted uh, susceptibility images, um, diffusion, uh, got ASL, so cerebral perfusion, um, with the SWE data sets, we're also doing QSM, um, so which is another degree of uh, post-processing that we need to do with our data, and we need to keep our case-based data to be able to do this. Um, resting state um, and some diffusion analysis as well. Um, and our, one of our motivations for actually developing the, the set of tools that I'm going to describe is that in a, you naturally end up with um, very heterogeneous environments in labs um, due to the people that are working there, um, decisions that were made in the past. Um, you, you know, you have lots of compute facilities that may not be on site or off site, etc. Um, and ideally, you want to be able to deal with this um, in a unified manner. And we wanted the tools we developed um, or the, the system we developed to be as flexible as possible to make use of. Um, all the available resources that we had. And to give you an example of the sort of informatics type setup at MBI, we've got data coming in from three scanners, and there'll be a fourth one very soon, um, into our central data store, which is um, Daris. And Daris is like XNAT, it's a centralized medical imaging data set, uh, sorry, uh, database that's uh, built on top of MediaFlux, which is a media asset management system. So it's MediaFlux there. Um, and then you know, it goes off onto some disks and gets stored there. And you know, we also get data from offsite. So we've got some researchers in Monash that are, uh, or even in other universities that are using um, facilities offsite. And they want to store their data together with all the other stud studies that they're doing at Monash. Um, and you know, they can access their data via Daris using a web portal. Um, or you know, onto, onto the computational resources using web download, uh, command line fetch. There's lots of ways of actually getting to your data. Um, so you know, this, the use of these um, sort of centralized informatics systems is becoming quite common and especially being pushed forward by the large um, cohort studies that I just talked about before, like ABLE, uh, ADNI, and the Human Connectome Project. Um, but Instead of just storing data, we can actually use them to uh, improve the reproducibility and consistency of our process data and related metadata. Um, so, for example, Daris and XNAT. Um, and you know, there are a few workflow engines available as well. Um, there's Kepler and Tavana. Uh, and for medical imaging in particular, we've got NiPipe and the Lonnie pipeline. Um, and there's some workflow capability built into um, some of the informatics systems as well, such as XNAT. Um, however, in many cases, uh, we found that the workflows are, can be a bit difficult to develop, um, or you're restricted in where you can run them. So you need to have your database running on your compute system, and you can't really move too far away from that. So what we came up with is um, this idea of distributed workflows to kind of increase the flexibility. Um, of how we can do the analysis. Uh, and the, the idea basically is that we decouple how and where we store the data from the computational resource and the description of the workflow itself. Um, so you know, our, um, the data can be stored in a, X, uh, in a Deris um, database, XNAT, or on the file system. Um, and what we've developed is a set of unified ways of accessing these uh, to get the raw data in run your workflow, get your outputs, and then the process data and metadata goes back. And you know, this could be a description of what your workflow does. Uh, and you know, something I picked up while I've been here at the conference uh, is this bids project, which is going to be very useful. And um, when I get a bit of time, I'm going to make sure that our file system uh, access mechanism starts conforming to the bid specification. Um, so what we have done is actually develop some of these Python-based wrapper libraries that I've talked about. Um, and the, what 
they, the workflow is kind of gets broken down into these three steps. So you've got data access, and you know we use Python and REST, mainly Python, uh, but you can use REST as well with Darius and XNAT. Um, the, the one sort of really flexible uh, piece of technology that Darius provides, and it's not available in XNAT yet, as far as I'm aware, but hopefully will be in, in the future, is, um, is one-time tokens. And this means that we can ex um, when you execute, when you push your workflow, um, you can use your credentials to get a token from XNAT, uh, sorry, from Darius, that provides you access to your data for this one time. And then after your workflow executes and uses the token to get your data, the token is no longer valid. So this way, you can actually, you don't need to send your credentials or anything sign in all the time with your workflows. Um, so our workflow execution is dependent on you know, open source tools. Uh, majority of the cases, 99% of the time, we're using NiPipe to describe our workflow. And the NiPipe workflow makes use of FSL, SPM, tools that are available in the community. Um, and then you know, whatever tools are available, the job managers on the systems themselves. So Talk, PBS, um, SunGrid Engine, et cetera, et cetera. And then, um, we take the results, uh, which are the expected results are also described in the workflow uh, with the metadata and some logs, and then we can upload them back into the uh, into Darius XNet, wherever, whatever database you're using. And again, this is Python REST, and a little bit of NiPipe. And this shows, not very clearly, but shows the result of the one of the workflows, the outputs going back into our data set and you'll see a QSM image that has been a result of this workflow called QSM 1.1. Um, and together with that, you also get a description of what the workflow did, um, or what the, work, what the workflow was about. And what I don't show here, but um, you can come and talk to me about that, is also in the attachments, you have the provenance information uh, that is generated by the NiPipe pipeline for this particular process. So you've got everything together, some metadata, your results, and your provenance information. So you know we've we've uh, we've, ha we've been developing this tool for about a year or so. We're using this for our Asprey study. Um, now uh, what we're sort of doing as a next step is this um, this MBI automated workflow environment, which is a sort of a GUI user interface. Um, that allows, it, allows other people to use these tools very easily, hopefully. Um, and the idea is that it's uh, designed to be a, it's kind of pluggable in nature. Um, so you've got plugins for workflows, uh, for informatic systems, and execution systems. So as long as your plugin provides this uniform interface, um, it, in theory, you should be able to work together with the workflow. So yeah. You know, in theory, you could use this for any kind of workflow description, but you know, in our case, we try and use NiPipe as much as possible. It's a great tool, and you know, provides free provenance information, um, which is very useful. So, just quickly, I'm just going to scroll through a couple of slides showing what the prototype looks like. So, uh, you've got all your workflows on the side. You click on one; it gives you a brief description what the in inputs it expects and outputs, uh, where it can run. Uh, the pipeline graph, you can pick your, your information execution systems, putting some details um, w and some details of where. So Massive, which Wojtek will talk about a bit later on, um, is our HPC facility at Monash. So details about accessing your uh, HPC account um, and you know, which particular data set you want to process, and off you go. And then once it's done, you get an email back saying this is completed successfully, uh, or if there's an error, you get the logs coming back to you. So just for some future work, we want a tighter integration with some of the community standards. Uh, so as JB talked about earlier, so NIDM and BIDS. Uh, you know, we're getting sort of the NIDM workflow part from the provenance information that we get out of our NiPipe workflows. Uh, it would be really good to sort of incorporate um, the NIDM results parts with our standard processing pipelines for FreeSurfer and FSL. Uh, and I don't know about the NIDM experiment part because that means we're going to have to get um, the users to kind of you know think about this before they get started. But we'll try. 
um, we want to finish this prototype uh, for the, work, um, the automated workflows environment and evaluate it um, and make it available for users of our facility. So both large and small cohort studies and hopefully eventually if people are interested, you know, to the wider community. And Gary's ideal goal is to make it child's play to be able to do this. Thanks. And then, so this is some of our colleagues that, I've, um, that have helped with work. So Michael, Brian, and Tuan from Monash Biomedical Imaging and from Melbourne University, Neil, Amanda, and Wilson. Thanks. Thank you, Panesh. OK, I believe lunch calls. We've got time for one question. So how many, how many of you are working on this? I mean, is, is it just you or is it uh, yeah, it's just you? Yeah. So that, that's also where having a community of people that are developing the same, same sort of things and uh, is, is critical. I mean, to, uh, yeah. yeah. So um, we are trying to, I mean, there's a few more people interested in this now that we have some, some, you know, some results. Um, so we are trying to get them together um, in Australia. And then once we get a few things going, then possibly other people. But um, I'm happy to put it up on GitHub once I have, you know, ironed out some of the issues and bugs. Okay, thank you, Panesh. Uh, look, I think it's been a great session. I think.